Brennan here, Cottage Lane Stamper. In my last video, I um, made this card and told you that I had put it into a set in this box I made. Um, this is kind of a little story. My sister-in-law, she is just starting out doing cards. She's been scrapbooking for a long time. And she turned me on to this one website, uh, I think it was called Hedgehog Hollow from the UK, who made this beautiful box. Um, not this particular one, but she made a beautiful box. But it had um, just, it was an angled box. So basically you just had this part here and had her cards displayed there. So I guess this is a two-part thing. If you could, if you wanted to, you could just do the bottom part of the box or you could do as I did and add the flap and the belly. And she also had a belly band, I think, on hers or decorated the panel on the bottom. I can't remember which, but anyway, I'm going to show you how to make this box today. So you're going to start out with a piece of um, Whisper White cardstock for the back of the box. This bottom part here. I'll zoom out a little bit there. It's right here. And it is eight and three quarters by want to see that six and a half I'll have the measurements all on my blog to cottage lane stamper .net. and I'll have a link down in my um, video to it too so we're going to take this piece of whisper white cordstock and we are going to score it at get my board in here my little note on the long side we're going to score it at uh, three and a fourth. Oh, by the way, hers was for a note card size, so I adapted this to the A2 size. Um, if you're interested in the note card size, I can also put that in my, the dimensions for that in my blog. Um, process is the same. So three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And we're going to turn it, and on the short side, we're going to score it at one and five and a half. I'm going to set this aside because we're going to use our scoreboard later. And we are going to take our take our phone folder and, and fold the score marks. Burnish them so nice and sharp. So it looks like that. You can see the lines there. And then what we're going to do, this will be the back of the top here. This will be the bottom and the front and the sides. So we're going to cut on this score line just up to there and just angle it a little bit. Now, typically a lot of people like to, I'm going to do the same thing here, angle this one. But for me, <clears throat> and this is just a personal preference, I like to leave this, this one that's for the back square or straight so that when I fold the box, it, uh, I make sure that it is square. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. I'll just, when you notch these, it just makes the folding a little bit better, too. Otherwise, you get too much bulk sometimes on some projects. So, there it is. And I'm going to use a little combo. When you're doing this, you could also use, um, well, you could use a tear and tape, or you could use fast fuse. Um, I like Tombow because it gives me a little bit of leeway if I need to move things a little bit. So, we're going to just a little there. I'm going to fold this up and this is what I mean by squaring it off. Now the back of the this fold um, is against the back of the, the box. So it makes it kind of, it squares it off more. And that way I can just slide the side there like that. Let's see that. 
kind of squares it off on the inside. Then we'll take, now this will be the front, so we want to make sure we glue this last because we want a nice finished edge on the front. So we're going to take a little Tombow here. It's in there. Oh, keeps on folding up on me. And there. And let's hold that for a second. Make sure these are all nice and square here. And there's our bottom. And now we can um, we can put the panel piece on. Let's see, we've got two panel pieces. Which one is it? it? Must be this one. Yep. So the panel piece for the bottom is four and a quarter by three. Let me make a note of that so I get all this straight in my notes. I should have it written down in a notebook. I kind of write things down as I go in a notebook so that I can keep track of them. Bottom panel. There you go. And this you could use Tombow on too. I'm just going to use some snail because I think that'll be fine. It's when these edges get a little, have a little bit of pressure on them or get used over and over again that you want to make sure that you have a, use a nice strong adhesive. And just make sure my edges are secure there. Okay, so there's the bottom part. So if you wanted to do just that part, you could and then decorate it. And it has enough room for four cards and four envelopes. So Now we will do the top part, the flap that goes over the top. And this is four and a half by ten and a half. And we're going to score it at three and a half and four and a half. scoreboard back in here and that is on the long side three and a half by four and a half when I use my stylus on the scoreboard I like to use the bigger end so that I don't if I put too much pressure I just might poke through sometimes I don't know my own strength and we're gonna burnish those and I think we're going to put our panel piece on this right away, which is for here. And that's a PS, piece of DSP, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And this DSP that I'm using here is actually um, from the I think it's farmer's market. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Or fruit basket. I want to call it fruit basket all the time, so that screws me up. Anyway, so we're going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that little snail. And, uh, I'm a blonde and a senior citizen, so things don't go well for me sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> there, we got that. And now what we're going to do is just, we're going to, we're not going to put glue on the whole thing. So I'm just going to make a tiny little pencil mark so I don't, there it is. about there so I don't go past where I need to go. Make sure I don't have that pencil mark on there. It's going to be covered. Okay. I'm using Tombow again because this flap is going to be opened and closed maybe a couple times and you want to make sure, especially if you're giving this as a gift, that it stays secure. So I'm going to line this up like this. Make sure it's all square on the bottom. I'm going to put my little hand in there. Smush that glue around. That's a technical term, you know, smush. And there. Now we have our, our box done. Well, the basic part of the box. Then we're going to use a belly band to wrap, to secure it closed. And I'm using some retired DSP um, 
I'll have to get the name of it for you, but it's from a previous catalog. It just has a little design on here. You need a 12-inch piece of cardstock that's one inch wide. And uh, I thought this would dress it up a little bit. Plus, I'm going to use another piece of this for the front panel. So, but you could use anything you wanted. You could use the same color cardstock. You could use the same uh, piece of this DSP. And I love that. It's like my favorite DSP right now. So, we're going to score this. Oh, I'm going to bring my scoreboard in. It's on the long side. This is 1 by 12. And I am going to score it on the back side. So, 2 and an eighth. That's 2 and a quarter. 2 and an eighth. 3 and an eighth. 7 and 7 eighths. And 8 and seven eighths. There we go. I wanted to make my sure my valley went to the inside on this. Um, for your DSP, that's better than having to go to the outside, so you don't crack your pattern or paper. So that will fit here, and then we are going to back is a little bit big. There's just a little bit of, uh, we don't want it too tight because we wouldn't be able to slip it off. So I'm going to put a little of tear and tape. Find the end here. And just put this here to secure it. I'm going to put a little, let's tear that off. And I'm going to put another little strip right next to it. So I have enough adhesive holding it shut. It wouldn't be good for it to pop open, would it? So we're going to wrap this around here. And line it up. There you go. Now, don't worry about the seam because we're going to cover that up. <coughs> Excuse me. My notes out of here. And what we're going to do next is this little panel. Now, this, <laughs> I like to reuse things, and I did a, um, the card kit watercolor, which is, which is like my favorite card kit. I just love, 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 love the muted colors in it and the, and the watercolor washes and stuff. Anyway, this is a leftover piece from it, so I've used it. But we're going to improvise. We're going to do something similar. So for the flower, we are going to need a piece of Whisper White cardstock, 3 by 3 And for the back of the flower, behind the pink part, we're going to use the same DSP that's 3 by 3 And then to back all that up, we are going to use another piece of that um, DSP that um, I can't remember. I wish I could think of the name. Anyway, it's got the little pattern design in it, one of the irresistible patterns. So, and let's see. Oh, that's right. Okay, I had to get my thoughts together because I'm doing this a little bit different. So we're going to cut. This flower out of that, and we're also going to use the um, framelit that goes around it. Now, if you watched my last video, you saw this, but for me, I, the first time I used it, I had a hard time lining them up. So what I just I just nested the smaller one on top and made little marks on my sharpie so I knew where they lined up. So I'll use this as the bottom when I cut it out here, and then. I find it easier to cut out the framelit first and then the flower part. That's just me. Whatever works for you, do it that way. This, excuse me, I'm losing things here on my desk, which is normal for me. 
So to create this frame that I use as a leftover piece from another set, I am going to use my stitched square or stitch framelits and nest those together and we'll see how this goes. I'm going to cut those out of this pink VSP and then this irresistible piece will be a background piece. I cut it three by three. I may need to cut it down a little bit um, just to get it behind or I may just leave it. It will give it a nice border. Some of these things just make up as you go along. So I'll be right back. I'm going to go cut these all out and I will return. Oh, and also for a couple of the leaves, which were also stolen from, or not stolen, left over from another um, kit that I put together. I believe it was a paper pumpkin kit that I had. And I'm going to use this little die cut from the, did I even tell you? Stylish Stems Framelit Set, which also goes with the oops, Special Reason Stamp Set. So. I will be right back. I'm going to use a piece of paper, uh, pear pizzazz, just a scrap to cut those leaves out. So, back in a sec. Okay, we are back from cutting now. Um, oops, I forgot one thing, just a second. Alrighty, I forgot my uh, dye brush. So, these tiny, ooh, can you see these tiny little leaves? There we are. Most they came out pretty good. I probably don't need to use a dye brush on this too much. But I'm going to one of them. There's a couple little pieces in here that'll come out. Whoops, got stuck in my brush. And it wasn't such a good idea. I'm gonna poke this one out because they are so tiny. I don't want them to get caught up in the brush. There's one. There's another. Okay. Now the die. What did I do with the die? You might need it on the die to get some of the little pieces from behind. This one looks like it came out pretty good, pretty clear. So just set that over there. Get rid of that. And now the um, We are going to need to use it on the flower. The flower is like a two-step process. Like I said, first I cut this out, the framelit piece, because when you just use this, all it does is it doesn't cut every the outside. It just cuts the inside. So it's a beautiful effect. I love that. But um, you have, it is a two-step process. And then you have your little flower kind of stuck in here. You can use your paper piercer to poke it out, to coax it out. And it comes out easy. Or you can use your dye brush, whichever you prefer. And that'll loosen it also. So. And, oops, look at, I have to redo this because my flower, I got a little too close to the edge. So let me recut that and I will be right back. So I said before that um, I usually like to cut out this piece first and then this piece. Well, maybe that was a mistake. So I've cut out this piece and now I'm going to frame this. That's why it's called a frame wood. With this and my little marks I made will fit down here. And I just need to line it up. Oops, sorry, I'm out of camera range there line it up and then you can see where your border is. So this is probably a better idea. Voila! Perfection! <laughs> I love it when an idea works. Um, so we all learn by our mistakes and we all like to share them with you so you can avoid making the same mistakes we do. So here is the stitched framelit that I'm going to use on my white background here. So, And I'm going to trim this down just a hair. Like I said, I cut it three by three. So I think I'm going to cut off like maybe uh, an eighth of an inch all the way around. A 
we'll start with that and see how it works. Let's see. There is an eighth of an inch. There. Let's see how that looks. I like that. So we're going to glue that down. This little combo. Whoa! Our glue dots are being rebellious. They were being ignored, and they're not—they're not happy. I love these stitch framelits. They were so popular when they came out in the catalog at Christmas time. And we ran out of them, but they are back. And then we have this other stitched framelit piece left over from the center. And this little one from the border that we could reuse if we wanted to. I am going to hang on to this one. I just love this paper and I love the stitch frame look. So we are going to put that there. Then, let's see. That's good. Oh, I know what I forgot. One step. I forgot one tiny piece, and that is the flower that goes behind this. So I'm going to go and cut that out of this same DSP. So one more piece of DSP that is 3x3. Three three. I'll be right back. And we are back. So I forgot I had this little piece behind here. So we're going to use some of our Tombow. I'm going to get my... silicone sheet out here because it's going to be a little bit, I don't want to make too much of a mess on my tabletop here. So we're just going to put a few dots here and there. My sister-in-law started making these boxes to give as gifts to friends, which is a great idea. Um, my mother is 92, lives in assisted living, still pretty doing pretty well on her own. I lost my dad last year, he was 91. And I had a conversation with her yesterday. I said, oh, you know, it's my sister's birthday, Nancy, next week. And she goes, oh, I have to go get her a card. I said, mom, don't you have all those cards that I gave you? Oh, that's right. I'll have to go get them and set them out so I remember about them. <laughs> then she goes, I don't know if I'm going to remember when to send birthday cards. I said, well, you know what you can do is just, um, we're going to attach this with a dimensional. Make out cards for the month or the year, however you want to do it, month by month. You know, put them in the envelope. You don't have to seal it. Then right up in the upper right-hand corner when you need to mail it. Oh, that's a good idea. So I said, then you have them all done and they're all sitting there and all you have to do is pop them in the mail and put some postage on them. So I give her a bunch of cards. I just let her pick out whatever she wants. And we're going to attach this. I think I'm going to put my little leaves on here first. Um, and then she's got what, however many cards she needs for the year. That. I'm going to put just a little tombow on here. Oh, you know what? I just thought of a wonderful idea, which I didn't do. But if you take your, for these really, really tiny, tiny cuts, what I'm going to show you is a trick. Um, just take some of your tear and tape and Put it on your cardstock here. I'll put, I don't know, three pieces maybe, because I'm not sure where these are all going to lay. And then you do your die cut. I'll show you how slick that is. Hang on. Okay, so I put tape on the back, and I'm just going to poke these out. I can use my brush too. I just had this in my hand. And you see the tape is on the back, the adhesive, that tear and tape. 
I get out of here now. There we go. There. Now all we have to do is peel this tape off. And hopefully the little you know, the poke these out real quick because they'll be I don't want the adhesive on the back of my um in my box there. There's only a couple of these, so it's it's not too bad. But now we've got adhesive. We don't have to mess with Tombow. You could use the fine glue fine glue pen. And there's one. It's stuck to my finger. And there's just a little bit of tape left. Some of this tape came off already in my hand when I was taking it out of the die. There we go. Make sure I get all the tiny little pieces out of here. And I'm going to put that there. And now I'm going to put my flower on here. There! Isn't that gorgeous? Now we're going to take a little, um, yay! It's flying all over here. Get a sequin out. Here are glue dots. Now we're going to use you. You don't need to feel neglected. Let's see. Put a glue dot on here. And I always like to put them right on the, um, I can zoom on a little bit more. Right on my roll and then take them off with my paper piercer. It's easier to to um, place them there. There. Or we could have used a little bit of a dimensional too. Just a corner, like I said, never throw the pieces away. Could have just cut off a piece of this and then it would have given it a little bit more. I'll show you what it elevation. Let's just try it real quick. See how it works. Oh, we'll leave it. Eh. Don't want to mess with stuff too much. Okay, get this out of here. And now we are going to attach this to our belly band. There. And I think we're just going to, I think I'm going to put a couple pieces tear and tape along here. Right about midline. And I'm right next to each other. We don't want it wider than this, so we get it on our box. And this one I actually tore off a little bit too much, so I'm just going to flip that back. Or came over the edge anyway, so I'm trying to say. Tear that one off. And we're going to put this on here. There. There it is. And now we can just flip this open and put our cards in it. Voila! The card matches the box. I love it. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. I'll have all the dimensions and instructions in my blog. And, which is cottagelanestamper.blogspot.net. All the supplies you can buy and get at my store. Um, SharonBrennan.stampinup.net. I'll have both of those in my um, the video link and on my blog, and on the video itself, the beginning and the end. Let's see what else is there. Now remember, the Occasions Catalog is through March 31st, so you have about a month left, 2017, and you can get the stylish stems, framelits, the special reason, and if you buy those two, um, along with maybe the, like the DSP that I bought, that will be a qualifying purchase 
for something from the celebrations catalog. And they did add a couple extra things. So on February 21st, this beautiful glitter paper. I love these um, these stamp sets, Hooray and Cheer. And then there's also the medallion. But the celebration catalog also has other wonderful items in it that you can choose for free for the qualifying purchase of $50 or more. So anyway, thank you for stopping in. Take care of yourself, and may God bless you. This is an addendum to the, the um, video I did on the card box. I forgot one little part here. You need to cut off these angled pieces right here. Just go from the corner up to the top. And that's it. Just a simple little thing. So it just looks a little bit nicer when your when your cards are sitting in there. Put the card in there. So there you are. Thanks again for stopping in. Bye.